Today we're beating the kebab shop and we're making koftas at home. I welcome along to Barbecue Life. This is a mini series where we like to try and beat the kebab shop and we're covering everything from koftas like we are cooking today. We have done doner kebab before and we've got lamb shish and chicken shish coming and all of your sides that you are going to want to associate with a decent kebab shop meal and we're doing it at home for considerably less money than it would be to buy from the kebab shop and it's going to taste even better so let's crack straight on with this and first things first you need a bowl and we need the juice of an onion so to do this you want to line that bowl with a tea towel and then grate an onion over the top so just be careful of your fingers it's quite easy to catch your fingers on that round surface of the onion you just want to grate all of that whole onion into the the cloth and then once you've got that all in there you gather the cloth up and you squeeze that cloth and all of the onion juice comes out from underneath and this is going to give us a beautiful flavour to our meat without having the fibrous content of the onion itself which is exactly what we want we just want that flavour and then we want our kebab to just be our beautiful lamb so next into that bowl we need to go one clove of garlic I should just use a garlic press and get that in there. So now we need to be going in with our spices. So we need to be going in with a teaspoon of cumin, some fresh parsley. So this is just a decent sized handful of fresh parsley that I've diced up incredibly small just to give us that beautiful green throughout the meat. We want to go in with a quarter of a teaspoon of allspice and a chilli that we have again diced up nice and small and that's going to give us our nice red flecks throughout the uh, the kebab itself if you want it a bit hotter then you can leave the seeds in but I have taken the seeds out today and then we just need a nice amount of salt and pepper a fair bit of pepper in this about half a teaspoon if you can get it in there so we've got all of our flavorings into the bowl and now we need to be going in with our mints so about 450 grams is what I'm using today and I'm just breaking that up into smaller pieces and working that through the, all of these spices that we've got in a bowl and you can squeeze it and just you just want to make sure that the spice is completely incorporated right the way through the meat same as what we did with our doner kebab video last week so once you've got that all completely mixed through we then just want to get that chilled in the fridge because we want to keep it as cold as possible so after a couple of hours in that fridge, we have let all of the, the moisture within the meat so it would rehydrate all of them spices and herbs and things that we've got inside of the, that we've mixed through the meat. So now we need to start getting it onto a skewer. So I picked up these skewers from Amazon. Now they are pretty long. And these are ideal for using on the Aldi Camaro because they can sit front to back or side to side. So they just sit sort of on the edge and then you can have your meat in the middle directly over the heat and there's no need to have a grill grate. So we want to take our meat, break it up into little sections and we push it onto this skewer. So we don't sort of slide it on the end. You want to be gripping this meat and squeezing it around the skewer and giving it sort of little finger ridge marks if you can get them in all the way down. Don't overload the skewer with too much weight because this kebab does have a tendency to fall off the skewer if you put too much weight on this. You want to keep it as thin as possible and you ideally want a, a skewer that is flat and quite wide. So that one I showed you a minute ago that is just over a centimetre wide. So when we come to turning our kebabs later on nothing's going to spin on the metal shaft of the skewer and it's going to be nice and easy to flip over so once you've got that onto that skewer then we're going to go back into the fridge if you've got the room to help firm that up in its new position onto the skewer if you haven't got the room then keep it as cold as you possibly can do not let this warm up sort of on the side before cooking because the warmer it gets the higher the tendency is of it falling off the skewer so get it back into that fridge while we light our kamado so we're just lighting the Audi Camado in our standard way. So a couple of wax woodies in the bottom, get them lit, bottom vent open and the lid open while they take. And then once they have taken, we shut our lid down, open the top vent round, hinge it round. So that makes basically makes a giant chimney starter and it really gets the charcoal going. And then we start to dial in our temperatures once the dome is a bit warmer to the touch. And then 
we're aiming for about 200 degrees C today. It's the same sort of temperature that we were cooking the uh, donna kebab at and same temperature that we're going to be cooking our lamb shish and our chicken shish, which are other videos within this series. So once we've doled in that temperature, you just want to get this skewer and we lay it front to back across the kamado, dead in the centre. So you've got a nice roaring charcoal underneath and we lay it dead there so that you're going to get an even amount of cooking right the way through the kebab. But what we don't want is a load of charcoal at the front or a load of charcoal at the back because with these skewers having this twisty end on, that means that we can't really easily turn it round um, from front to back because that they're just so long um, and the twisty end doesn't sit very well sitting out the back of the Kamado where the hinge is if you put it in sort of side to side then you could probably get away with being able to flip it so that one end of the kebab goes to the other end of the kebab but if you can make sure that your charcoal has got a decent amount of um, coverage and it's all even in its burn then it's going to make this cook a lot better. If it's not even in its burn, then the best thing to do is the ash tool that, that you get with the Kamado, go in and give all of that charcoal a good stir around, shut the lid back down, keep your vents where they were, st stabilise for 200 degrees, and leave it for another five to 10 minutes, and that will help catch the rest of that charcoal that's not taken, and it will give you more of that even burn. So we've got this kebab on, it's been sitting there for about four minutes and it's time to go in and check it hope that it's still on the skewer first of all and we need to flip it over so we open the lid and the th first thing I can see is that there is a bit of a crack down one end so I am going to put the grill grate underneath once I've got this flipped because I don't want it to fall into the flames if you want to be 100% sure it's not going to fall into the flames you can always leave the grill grate in place right from the beginning so we're just going to turn it over and as you can see there's a nice colour on that underside and it's your typical golden brown kebab shop sort of colour and we're just going to shut that lid back down and cook for another four minutes after that four minutes we need to go in and start checking temperatures so you want to check both ends of the kebab just in case you have got any hot spots because you might have one end if you go in at one end and it's cooked and you go in at the other end and it's not then you're going to have issues when you start serving to your guests so make sure you check both sides of the kebab and both ends of the kebab and turn things um, over to make sure that we're getting an even cook and that everything is cooked all the way through so once you've checked all your temperatures you are looking for 74 degrees c on this just to make sure that it is 100 percent cooked through and all bacteria from that supermarket bought mints is burnt off if you've got mints from a butcher and you trust that butcher then you probably could go a little pinker on this but i do like my coftes sorry coftas cooked all the way through i don't want any pink in my kofta so we've checked with that temperature you now want to take it off and let it rest for a few minutes so we've got no taste test here today as i've said that this is a series of videos and i've cooked lamb shish chicken shish the koftas today Donna kebab and a load of other sides all for friends all cooked on the same night so it was a pretty big um not an easy way to entertain and film all at the same time but you can see the beautiful platter of food that we've made out so there is no taste test but i can assure you that all of these kebabs from this series went down incredibly well and everybody was really happy with them so make sure you give them a try if you like what we're doing here at barbecue life then please do subscribe to the channel make sure you join our new mailing list we have dropped the website now and we've just going straight in with a mailing list so the link for that is in the description below if you're not um, joined that and your first email that you'll be sent out will cover all of the current discount codes for barbecue life and if we get any new discount codes or offers or anything coming through then i will email them out to you on top thank you very much for watching cheers